Italy's president has accepted the resignation of Prime Minister Mario Draghi after a week-long attempt to unite his crumbling coalition failed. Draghi went to Sergio Mattarella's office this morning to offer his resignation for the second time in a week. The president accepted this time but asked Draghi to stay on as caretaker until a replacement can be found. Earlier in Parliament, Draghi told lawmakers he had tried and failed to gain the necessary support he needed to continue in the job. Well, let's get the latest now from journalist Sima Gupta in Rome. Sima, Mario Draghi is highly regarded in Italy and abroad. He's seen as a safe pair of hands. Why did he lose the support he needs in Parliament to run the country? Well, essentially, uh, you have to remember that when he came into this role some 17 months ago, he was given this mandate to uh, lead a unity government, a national coalition involving the right, the left, the populace. So it was a really large group of people with very differing ideas. And what we saw happen in that vote of confidence in the upper house of parliament, in the Senate on Wednesday, is that the Forza Italia, the right wing uh, uh, centre right party, as well as the far right league party and the populist five star movement essentially snubbed that vote. They boycotted it altogether. And so uh, they made their decisions for differing reasons. The Five Star Movement feeling that for months their priorities were being ignored, their push for things like a basic income and a minimum salary that they wanted to see continue, uh, these things they felt, among other things, were not being listened to. For Forza Italia and the League Party, the conservative right-wing parties, uh, they said... Uh, we'll support Draghi, but there has to be a shake-up of government and we want to be in there without the five-star movement. So essentially, for differing reasons, these three major uh, parties in this national coalition said they're not going to partake, partake in that vote. So they just boycotted it. And that means for Mr Draghi, he didn't have that national unity that he said, mm. I have the mandate to take part. So he went and made the decision to resign to Mr Mattarella. This collapse of the government, Seema, comes as Italy faces multiple crises, a, a severe drought, an energy crunch, the prospect of a recession. The timing couldn't be worse, could it? You're absolutely right, Terry. I mean, timing everything. Uh, this government's mandate was actually supposed to run out in the spring of 2023. So most Italians, some two-thirds of them in recent polls, said that they wanted Draghi to continue to maintain the stability. And there were pleas being made from various quarters in Italy and outside as well. But as you mentioned, now we're in this situation, really soaring inflation, high energy prices. You've got that drought as well with ridiculously high temperatures. Uh, the war in Ukraine, Draghi was seen as a safe pair of hands, a respected European leader dealing with that issue. And not to forget also about Italy trying to diversify its energy uh, sources away mm. from Russia. So now you have this situation where the centre-left party leader, Enrico Letta, made it very clear. All those that did not vote in this are responsible for the situation that they're in right now. And of course, at the European level, they're wondering about those reforms that mm. Mr Draghi was supposed to push forward in order to get that post-pandemic recovery fund money. So what's next for Draghi and the country? Uh, fresh elections, I presume. Well, Mr. Mattarella has said he's taken note of the resignation. He hasn't rejected it like what he did the day uh, six days ago. But essentially, he said he took note of the resignation. Draghi will remain in a caretaker role. But yes, you're right. It's headed towards fresh elections. Uh, he, Mr. Mattarella has already announced that he will be speaking to the speakers of both houses of parliament later this afternoon. So consultations have begun. We expect that he may dissolve parliament and call for fresh elections as early as late September or early mm. October, something unheard of in Italy, a country normally that approves the budget in that period now is going or headed towards fresh elections. Sima, thank you very much for that update. Journalist Sima Gupta there in Rome. Let's get the latest from journalist Alessio Perone, who is joining us from Milan in Italy. So, I mean, this is Draghi's second resignation in a week. How did it get to this point? Well, it's difficult to say in a way, and I think we should remember our audience that Draghi was, was always a, a broad coalition. He had support from a wide range of political parties behind him. And Italy was always bound to have new elections in spring 2023. I guess as we inched closer to, to that date, 
the, the electoral campaign probably started. Some parties tried to make political gains. That started with the Five Star Movement, uh, which was the biggest party out of the 2018 elections, and they started making claims about Ukraine, about not shipping Italian weapons there. Uh, that led to more bickering, uh, then the, the party splintered, and then other parties dropped out of the coalition. Um, after yesterday, there's a, there's a real sense of disbelief in, in Italian media, and many wonder how much responsibility Italian political parties can be trusted with. And all of that as Italy faces multiple crises, we have to mention, a severe drought, an underperforming economy um, in, in desperate need of reform. The timing couldn't be worse, could it? Yeah, like you said, and, and like I said, the, the real sense of disbelief is is partly due to that that reason. Here in the north, uh, in Milan, there's a severe drought uh, that's threatening crops. Um, the economy is isn't exactly thriving. Uh, Russia's invasion in Ukraine is uh, another talking point. Uh, but more than that, Italy just received a massive amount of European money through the recovery fund. The government should decide how to spend it and how to direct that money. And more than that, if Italy heads to uh, early elections, as it seems likely, it will be the first time the country votes in autumn, and for good reason, because uh, the parliament should discuss the budget in autumn. And if there's no government, if there's no parliament, uh, it is going to slow down on that front too. So what is next for Draghi and the country? Well, uh, like you said earlier, Draghi has been asked to stay on until a, care a caretaker can be found. Um, and now it's all in the hands of President Mattarella. Um, he can decide to hold consultations with Italian political parties to see if a new majority can be found. Uh, but political analysts are saying by far the most likely outcome of this will be early elections, probably in October. Uh, and so we're off to the races. And um, yeah, um, I guess there might be more surprises. Um, a major talking point in the electoral campaign will be migration with the far right parties that together combine 40% of the votes in the polls right now. Uh, likely to make it a talking point, Russia will figure prominently in the campaign too. Journalist Alessio Perone in Milan, thank you. Thank you.